this webinar. I'm starting right now. <laughs> and uh, we'll try and get that posted, uh, hopefully by the end of the week, but as soon as we can. If you have technical difficulties with Zoom, I'm going to give you a number to call because we can't fix them here. The number is 1-888-799-9666, extension 2. Please don't call TAR with technical questions about Zoom because we don't own the platform and our uh, receptionists are mighty mighty, but they cannot fix your computer from here. So um, moving into what we're going to do, and I see a raised hand. Um, this, uh, our presenter today is Michael Beckerman. Michael has spent the past 30 years in public relations, digital news, and the tech sectors, all focused on the real estate industry. He is the founder of Beckerman Public Relations, one of the top 50 largest independently owned public relations firms in the country. And he currently serves as the CEO of The News Funnel and its affiliated brands, The Content Funnel, Real Estate Tech News, and CRE Tech. Michael has been named, <clears throat> excuse me, one of the most influential bloggers and social media experts by several leading media sources, as well as being named one of the top commercial real estate people you must connect with on LinkedIn. Uh, it's in your bio, Michael. What am I? I know, but you know, you can't. <laughs> oh, it's painful to listen to people talk about you. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm done now, and I'm going to hand it over to you. Thanks so much for uh, helping us out, and take it away. Thanks, Amy. Thank you so much. Um, so uh, thank you to Texas Association of Realtors. Thank you, Amy, for inviting me to uh, give this uh, talk on commercial real estate technology, one of my favorite subjects in the world, next to my wife and kids, obviously. Um, but it's a great honor. It's a great thrill to talk to you this morning. Um, I thought what I would do is sort of paint a more broader brush of what's happening in the industry as opposed to getting very specific and getting into the weeds and talking about, you know, particular startups. Because um, at the end of the, the webinar, I hope that your takeaway is that, you know, you have a better sense of what's happening on the commercial real estate tech scene. Uh, you can determine if it's something you want to get involved in. Um, invest in, work in, utilize, and what have you, and you have a good sense of sort of where things are right now. And as you could tell, probably by looking at me, I'm not a techie, um, and my background is in on the marketing side of commercial real estate. Uh, so I think gives me a sort of unique perspective that I've come from within the industry, although albeit on the marketing side. So I understand how professionals like most of the participants that are listening in uh, think as it relates to technology and what their pain points might be. And I have been in full time in, in the tech sector for the last say five years or so. So now I think I'm one of the unique uh, people in the space that, that understands both the real estate side and the tech side. Um, I think the other thing just, uh, um, you know, little perspective is that I, as you can clearly tell, I don't like to script when I talk, probably to the detriment of those listening and clearly my team. So I try and make these uh, more conversational, uh, more a little more spontaneous and a little bit more authentic. Um, so I don't, I have some ideas and notes and we have an outline, but most of this is just sort of organically what I think about what's going on in the industry. It's not so much about, you know, you know, hard research that I've done uh, or um, it's not a lot of data. It's not a lot of statistics. It's just me, my experience, my time meeting with tons and tons and tons of um, startups and users and just getting familiar with the space. So Having said all that, also, as I said to Amy when we were talking about this last week, if you have questions, feel free to interrupt me. I'm pretty good like that. Um, so we can make this very sort of spontaneous and uh, more of a conversation than a presentation. Um, so um, just also just a little more on, on my perspective. Um, so there is no real... CRE tech, and I'm just going to use that. Hopefully we all understand that we're talking about commercial real estate technology. There is no CRE tech um, ecosystem. It doesn't really exist. 
that when I and when I say ecosystem, I'm talking about um, are there lots of professionals working in this space in the tens of you know in the thousands? No. Is there uh, money coming to the space? Yes. Is there lots of jobs and square footage being occupied by the startups? No, not yet. Um, is there a lot of media coverage on CRE Tech? Some, but not much. So I have kind of made it my passion, my focus, to sort of be the ambassador of the CRE Tech industry based on my age, as you can tell, and my experience in the space and now being in the, in the sector full time. Um, so this opportunity to speak to, to, to you all is a great opportunity for me to uh, talk about what's happening to sort of spread the gospel and the love of all things commercial real estate technology. So I spend my full-time days talking to startups by the dozens a week. They'll reach out to me directly. They'll tell me about their product. And then I will uh, try and help them in any way that I can uh, with introductions, with um, suggestions, feedback, I also spend a great deal of my time talking to the, the um, brokerage uh, sector. So I'm talking to um, CTOs at brokerage firms. I'm talking to actual brokers. I'm talking to um, also landlords um, uh, and the occupiers of uh, technology. So this is my full-time job, and uh, it, it's something I'm very, very passionate about, and I feel um, it's only going to grow and increase in its uh, significance uh, and traction in time. So I thank you uh, for, for this opportunity to talk about commercial real estate technology. So I'll just jump right into the slides then. So Katir, if you could just sort of follow along and, and let's uh, move into it. Um, so just by way, as I said, by, by way of background, um, I started in the business in 1989. I had built, um, uh, I was in my early 20s, and I had built um, a PR firm from scratch. I didn't, I didn't go to college. I didn't study it. I just felt that uh, media and content was something I always was passionate about. So I started a PR firm, and my niche was real estate. Uh, in the very beginning, it was residential, um, but uh, it started to to morph into more commercial as that sector started to to sort of develop and get more mature. So I built my PR firm over, say, the next 25 years or so, and we represented very large developers. We represented uh, REITs. We represented brokerage firms across the country, a national practice. And about 2008, I started to understand and recognize that the PR world was changing so profoundly that um, uh, it there were there were fewer news outlets, and I started to understand that real estate companies and brands could start to promote themselves. They didn't necessarily need a PR firm. Social media was really starting to uh, gain some traction, and so I had the idea that you know I I didn't really want to stay in PR much longer. So I had sort of engineered my my own exit and eventually wound up um, selling my, my stake in my agency uh, in about 2011, I, I entered the tech space. I thought at that time that it was gonna be just a giant industry, but I knew that it was gonna take a long time um, and that you had to be patient and it wasn't gonna be overnight. So we start, So my first site was the News Funnel, which is a, a probably the largest uh, news aggregator. So what we do is we take content from thousands and thousands of sources. We digitally read all that content and then we stream it to individual professionals in the real estate industry based on what their interests are. So if they're interested in Austin uh, office um, news, we will go grab all that news, put it into their mobile and their desktop. And that site's grown substantially. We have about 150,000 users on it and uh, feedback's really great and it's free and you could come get it and hopefully make your life a little bit more easier. We uh, then started to expand 
and to other uh, sites, we started a, a site called The Content Funnel, which does content marketing, which I'm also very, very, very passionate about for real estate companies. And what that is, is basically we white label blogs and do social media for real estate companies at really a fraction of the cost of what a PR firm might charge or what have you. No disrespect to PR firm, it's just a different cost structure. So I'm a huge believer in the power of blogging and social media and brands and individuals becoming their own media and educating their clients. And that's a lot what we do at the content funnel. We also started another site called Real Estate Tech News, which writes original content about the real estate tech sector. Um, and that can also be, uh, that's free. And you could, you could go check that out too if you're interested. So we work with about 100 or more startups in the commercial real estate space mostly and helping promote them and distribute their content. Along the way this past year, we had an opportunity to acquire a site called CREtech.com. Um, and what that does is it does uh, events for the commercial real estate industry. It's been around for a few years. Um, and we bought it and are really growing and expanding it. We had our first event since we acquired it in um, June in San Francisco. We had about 400 professionals. We had great speakers from Facebook and, and Salesforce and um, Airbnb and um, WeWork. And it was really great. We've got another one coming up in Los Angeles and one in New York. And next year, hopefully, we'll be in uh, Texas uh, as well for a big event. So any volunteers out there that want to get involved, we'll, hopefully we'll hear from you afterwards. And I know we've talked to Amy as well about getting involved. So that's who, what we're doing. So our collective brands, we sort of position ourselves as the center of information, um, uh, connectivity and news, all having to do with commercial real estate tech. We put out great resources like directories and what have you. So I, I invite you to come check out our sites uh, and what we're doing. So kind of gives me a good sense of the pulse of what's happening in CRE tech. And as I said, so I started, I started this journey in 2011. And um, so now I'll kind of walk you through what I have found to date and where I think things are heading. So, so when I started in, uh, I love that slide. Uh, when I started in 2011, um, this is so literally what I had found in commercial real estate. Um, now, most people think of technology as headquartered in Austin, with all due respect, or San Francisco and uh, Boston and some other markets. Chicago's got a good tech scene. But actually, the, the, the hub of commercial real estate tech uh, has largely been uh, focused in New York, and that's sort of, that's where I'm based in New York metropolitan area. So, 2011, when I had sort of said, "Hey, I want to be involved in commercial real estate technology," and here's my site, uh, it was met with a resounding uh, silence and not much traction. There were maybe a handful of sites existing at the time. Uh, there was View the Space, which is now VTS. There was Comstack. Uh, there was a company called The Square Foot. Um, and there was a few others. And maybe collectively, there was 50 people working at that time in the startup scene. So moving along, Terry. Um, so then if you, um, if you go to the next slide, what you'll see and what you'll understand is what the residential tech sector looks like and looked like it looked like today and looked like then and as you can see is a very very mature industry thousands of jobs tremendous amounts of revenue in the billions um, there's an ecosystem obviously in residential tech and you know when you think about it um and, you know, this audience is more of an expert on it than I am. It's not too hard to understand why, um, you know, that why the residential tech sector um, has grown first earlier than the commercial uh, tech sector. And, you know, a couple things come to mind. The first thing is that your, your clients are more comfortable on the residential side with technology. So they've been using their phones. They're comfortable on the Snapchats and the Facebooks of the world. They're using them to get their news and their information. They're shopping and what have you. So 
your target audience is much, much more comfortable uh, using uh, technology to begin with. The second thing is the residential community is clearly more mobile than commercial. Most commercial professionals are sitting at their desk in an office working throughout the day on uh, their job. They're not, you know, typically on the road in their car with 10 appointments a day. Uh, so they're not as mobile uh, as the residential sector. Um, and then, the, then I think the last thing is um, the residential sector from a venture capital point of view has what they're all looking for, which is scale. So while I think there's, I've read, maybe there's a million or so realtors in the industry, how many, you know, tens of millions of people I have no idea are buying homes every year or are doing something in their house uh, using technology. It's a massive audience. So venture capital is attracted to uh, industries that have scale, that can grow very quickly. Um, so you've had, as a result, a lot of M&A activity. Uh, a lot of money has gone into this industry. It's not just the Zillows and the Trulias and the Open Doors and the Next Doors. I mean, there are hundreds of sites, if not thousands, that have built substantial businesses in the residential tech sector. So when I get asked, you know, why residential went first and why it was so successful, to me, those are some of the, the obvious reasons why um, residential tech went first and why it's, why it's thrived and done so well. And I think clearly only going to get bigger. So, so next. Um, and then I think if you just to do a, a, just an analysis, and this is again, just more visual representation. If you look at, you know, sort of where the money still goes, it still largely goes to residential. Uh, and there's so many more interesting sites that are evolving uh, into uh, real businesses on the residential side uh, that are building marketplaces uh, on the investment side, um, on the property management side, on the leasing side, um, title, closing, data, valuation. I mean, I think on the residential side, it's probably, you know, I say, commercials in the second inning, I would say that uh, residential is probably, you know, in the fifth or sixth inning, which is, means that it's, it's scaling, it's growing, and I don't see uh, any signs of uh, corrections or uh, over um, speculation or overfunding. I mean, I think it still has, when I talk to the venture capitalists, a long way to go, and it's, I think it's reached a point where it's, it's really gonna scale even further, and as you can see, the residential side, still very, very early, the majority of the venture capital money, which makes all of these sort of ecosystems work, is still going to residential next. Um, and again, so if you look at like where um, commercial is today, um, the, the, the technologies that, that have been built, they're not really disruptive technologies. Um, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, sort of the evolution of the technologies and where people are uh, making some progress. Um, they're more sort of value add services to the brokerage community, to the landlord community, to the ownership community. They're in a couple different categories like uh, leasing management, listings, um, property management, um, of course, VR, which we'll talk about, some crowdfunding, some marketplaces and things like that. Um, I think, you know, we've tracked um, and I've heard, you know, there's probably about a 2,000 actual startups in the space today. Um, but the majority of them are pre-revenue, don't have that much traction, are a few people trying to get off the ground. Um, and so when you look at a slide like this, it kind of tells you that, it's not, there's probably a few dozen sites that have um, any sort of business uh, revenue 
uh, volume and what have you. So this is sort of, you know, again, if you compare this to residential, you could see it's still in its infancy uh, stage. So this is sort of where we are on the commercial side today. Next. Um, now I, I'll, I'll start to get a little bit deeper into like what's what's happening, like what's the undercurrent of of the ecosystem. So it's very, very interesting when you start to look about, at the funding, right? And, you know, my site is largely self-funded, um, but that's a very rare exception in tech. Um, and you need to, to really have uh, the venture uh, incubator community uh, as the underlying uh, support infrastructure for any sort of tech sector to get off the ground. And so one of the first things to look at is where's the money coming from? Who is the money? Um, what is sort of their dynamic, their motivation, um, uh, and their, their, their perspective? So I've just put, you know, a few um, of the, uh, the venture companies and, um, you know, in the commercial side, I think very different than the, 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 the residential side in the sense also that it's going to be more institutional funding than angel funding or individual funding because of the nature of commercial real estate being more B2B, uh, bigger dollars needed um, to scale longer runways needed to survive. So you're, I think it's going to be dominated by the venture community. And what's, what's been incredibly interesting over the past five years since I've been in this space is in the very beginning, it was very hard to get the venture community to pay attention to real estate. And now a lot of my time is spent talking to the VCs, some of the biggest and most well-known um, in the country that are now calling folks like me saying, hey, you know, we're, we're paying attention to commercial now. It's on our radar screen. We want to get involved. What do you see? What's the perspective? Send us deals, uh, which is a great, great thing. And I do spend a lot of my time um, sending deals to the venture capitalists because, again, that's how you build an ecosystem is you have to physically connect people. And that's what, what I do. So you have... Um, Sites. If you look at the, on the left top, the the left bubble there. So Camber Creek is a venture fund in New York um, that it was started by real estate people, commercial real estate people, that has a, uh, a dedicated fund and professionals who are, are investing in startups pre-revenue uh, with revenue and helping scale. Uh, Canaan Partners is one of the largest venture capital firms in, in Silicon Valley. With uh, if you go look at them with a real amazing track record of some of the best well-known startups. Um, jumping down, Modern Ventures, I think, came from the, as a spin-out um, of the uh, National Association of Realtors Venture Fund, now heavily focused. Thrive Capital is another one in New York, a very, very big, well-known New York VC. And Fifth Wall, which I'll just spend a second on, is uh, one of the most exciting things that I've seen since I've been doing this is the emergence of Fifth Wall. So. It's a bunch of folks who had great exits in, uh, in real estate tech, um, and you can look them up, and they just raised a fund, a $200 million fund, uh, to invest in commercial real estate, mostly commercial real estate. Um, they call it the, the built uh, environment, um, but they'll do residential as well. And what's, what's fascinating, not just the size of, of their fund, but who's in their fund. So basically what they did is they went to – uh, CBRE, Heinz, uh, Prologis, and a couple other major, major landlords, brokerage firms. And those firms each invested somewhere in the neighborhood of $15 million, which again is a rounding error for a company like Prologis. But it tells you that they're interested, that they're, they're getting more involved, and they're going to sort of do their lab work through the VC like Fifth Wall. Uh, just about some of the smartest people I've met, um, and it, and they're really and they're in LA, which is also very interesting, which has a really hot tech scene. So they are, um, I think, going to be uh, real disruptors in the commercial real estate tech scene. And then, um, you know, you've also got 
companies like Blackstone, who I think is the largest landlord in America now, investing directly into startups, which to me is extraordinary for, for several reasons. Um, one, because if they invest in a startup, they can quickly and easily scale that startup within their portfolio. Two, it tells you that as a, a company as sophisticated as Blackstone is investing in technology, they're going to force their, their vendors and their suppliers, therefore, to get up to speed and utilize uh, the same communications platforms that they're using. Um, and three is it tells you that they see an obviously an investment thesis that says they can make money on this. So when you look at the the mix of who the investors are in the commercial real estate tech space, um, it's these are serious people with long-term perspectives and horizons. So they're not going anywhere, and that should give you a great indication that this is a, a sector that's only going to grow and scale uh, in the future. Next. Now, the other really interesting thing to pay attention to is, well, who are the customers? Who's using these tools? And this is also, a, you know, a good indication that things are starting to accelerate. Um, Cushman and Wakefield, the Newmark, uh, Knight Franks, the NAIs, the Cobalt Bankers, the JLLs, the CBs, the Colliers, all of the, and I, I'm leaving off a lot, so this is not meant to be all inclusive, so don't get offended if I've left out your, your firm. Um, what this tells you is that all of these firms have hired into their C-suite, chief technology officers, whose job it is now to uh, invest in tech, materially invest in tech, financially invest in tech, to um, use tech within their uh, company. Um, and in some cases, which I know of, they're building their own. Um, so when the brokerage firms start to invest in technology and for instance if you follow cbre's acquisition of a startup called floored which does which is in the in the vr space i mean they bought that company um, because they see that as a competitive advantage uh, against their competitors so now this is going to which i'll talk about a little bit later set off somewhat of an arms race within the brokerage community to uh, really escalate and position the firms as to who's got the best technology. And, they'll, and, they'll, and there was an announcement, I think yesterday, or the day before from JLL, who said that you know, they've hired some real senior tech professionals to lead this for them um, to build a world-class tech platform, not only for their professionals, but for their clients. So, you, you, and then you're starting to see, you know, the Heinz, as I mentioned, and the Blackstones and the Brookfield also embrace technology. I mean, Brookfield's invested $30 million in one startup, uh, I believe, called Convene, um, to sort of give them uh, not the exclusivity on it, but um, uh, in a, a real point of differentiation within their portfolio of office buildings. And it's a um, it's an amenity app within their that, that, uh, tenancies uh, within their building. So it gives you a sense that the customers are really starting uh, to embrace um, the industry. Now, I'll just stop here for one second and just diverge as I do and let you understand that the first five years when, when I've been in this space, uh, it was there was just a few startups and it was it was virtually impossible to get traction to get a customer to utilize the technology and i know like in my case you know it's a lot of um, knocking on doors it's a lot of traveling making presentations just trying to get people to pay attention to us to understand this is what we're doing in technology this is what my site does 
And um, so for five years, there was very little engagement. There was very little traction. And I would tell you that, and this is why I got to sort of update this presentation, which is a few months old. Over the last year, everything is starting to change fast. And that's why I applaud um, Amy and, and your association for just even thinking about technology, because now it's going to be a rocket ship. Now it's really, really going to go fast because and you just have to look at the screen. Just look at these logos. Look at these companies. It's starting now for the first time to come from the top down. And that that's going to be a game changer. That's going to really, really um, start to accelerate adoption very, very fast. Next. Now, having said all of that, you know, I, I remind myself and I remind everybody I talk to that, you know, it's still so friggin', I think that's a Jersey word, friggin' uh, easy, uh, easy, early. Uh, when you look at CoStar, for instance, which is the behemoth in the industry, you know, you've got an eight plus billion market cap that it, it, they're a monstrous company they pushed into uh, residential and apartments they're just going to keep going and going and going uh, uh when you look at a company like 10x which many of you probably are familiar with from the auction.com side i mean they, their revenue is in the hundreds of millions of dollars thousands of employees or you look at another company like a yardie which is uh you know, just a behemoth and into many, many, many di different uh, business lines. I mean, I, I have some folks that know them really well and have told me, you know, their, their valuation is in the billions. And I don't think that there's um, a startup that's doing more than, that I know of, that maybe is doing more than $20 million in revenue. So we're still so early in this, uh, in the sector and it's got so much more room to go and you look at the top and it, there's a lot of distance between the top and sort of like where most of us are chugging along and then I, I wrote a blog and I hope you'll subscribe to my blog just because it's uh, it's fun and I hope it's fun and it's, it's interesting and I do a lot of Q&A's as well um, the one thing that nobody knows in commercial real estate technology is the big unknown is you know what happens if we wake up one day and Google says, hey, you know, Pete or S Sally, check out what's going on in, in commercial real estate and go build something. Uh, or, you know, Apple uh, or Amazon. I mean, we all have no idea what else could be coming because, as I said earlier, now um, we're getting the attention of the venture community and they're really starting to. Uh, pay attention to this industry. So everybody talks about it's the last big industry to not really embrace technology. So I have no idea. I'm not smart enough to understand who's coming, but there could be a seismic change uh, in terms of technology uh, that we're not aware of. And I bet you it's going to happen. If mean, you just follow you know, technology. I mean, five years ago, it was all about apps, you know, and now it's about Amazon and Facebook and, uh, you know, uh, uh, Apple um, and, 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 and a few others on the, on the B2B side, you know, a Microsoft or a Salesforce. So, um, you know, you know, we now are in this phase where we are dominated by a lot of small startups. And that's not going to last at some point, And that's why we're in this very interesting cycle. At some point, that's going to change. And I think it's starting. I think like when I think about the first five years, I really do think that we're at the end of that five-year period where we're going to now enter a new cycle. And the new cycle is going to be from all of these small startups into a, it's going to emerge into this bigger behemoth a few sites are going to dominate. And so when you look at like CoStar 10X Yardy, I mean, those are the ones to pay attention to. And I, I can only speculate what 
who else might be coming. Um, so now, you know, in Michael, your video appears to have frozen up. Oh dear, we may have lost Michael here for a second. Let me see. Hey, Kateri, it's Amy. We appear to have lost Michael. Are you still there? Yes, I am. Okay. Um, I just sent him a quick note to let him know that um, his video is frozen. Okay. Actually, yeah, he's, he, he, uh, he's lost his connection. He's no longer showing up. So he'll need to sign back on all the way. Um, hey, Amy, it's going to take just one minute. Um, it appears that the area that Michael is in has lost some, has had some power outages. Okay, so Amy, uh, Michael asked that I just kind of keep moving along so that we don't waste any time okay. here, um, yes. and that he'll join right back in as soon as he's able to get online. That sounds uh, great, because I do have somebody saying, please don't stop, it's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> well, wonderful, we're so glad that you find this interesting. Um, so in keeping with what Michael was saying, if you actually look at the slide and look at the trends from 2013 um, to 2016, and then now into the first part of 2017, annual deals are showing as 11% decrease in deal activity, but there's actually a 10% increase in funding. Um, so what that kind of means is that while you aren't seeing as many deals, the deals are being bigger and, they're, uh, and there's a lot more funding that's being put into the industry. Um, for early stage, which would be the seed and series A account, they account for 65% of the total deal share in 2016. Um, in the mid stage, which are series B and series C, um, the deal share has declined 13%. Now, if you look at late stage, which is series D, um, they account for only 5% of the deal share. So if you look at this in total, um, it's basically showing that early stage, so seed and series A accounts, they have a huge growth and they're continuing to grow. And as you kind of see those companies move into the mid stage or the late stage, you're, see you're seeing a decline. So what that's saying is also going back to what Michael was saying earlier, is that um, you're seeing companies who are in the startup phase, they're either growing or they're kind of um, just, they're not performing well. So we're starting to see where those people are clearly um, separating themselves from the pack, um, with like the VTSs, the CoStars, the Yardies um, of the world. So moving on to the next slide, um, what are some of the challenges that we're facing in CRE Tech? So a lot of people wonder why is it so difficult and so challenging um, for people to utilize tech in the commercial real estate industry? If the residential real estate side is doing so well and people are adopting the tech, what is so challenging for the commercial side? Um, currently, 
it's a multi-trillion dollar industry that appears to work just fine. Um, deals have been done for many, many years before, and they'll continue to happen. And so people think with or without tech, those deals are going to take place. Um, there's no history of any tech innovation in the space. Um, and it's also an older demographic that's um, extremely fragmented in the industry with a diverse geographic sector makeup. Um, we have a lot of non-tech savvy professionals, and by no means um, are we saying this is the majority of the population. But if you see, in term, but if you take a look at the industry as a whole and the people who are utilizing the tech as a whole, um, it is an older demographic. Um, not to say that they're not used to emails, computers, and everything like that. But um, how many apps do people have on their phone? You know, how many apps are they accustomed to working with? What about the app integration? From app to app when it comes to looking at things. Um, there are many startups that are integrating with one another now because they can complement each other. Um, I believe it was Realnex and um, Delia who just who are working on um, a deal right now. Um, there are two startup companies, well Realnex is a little bit more established, um, but their platforms work so well together that they're working on a partnership and an integration. Um, there's also a lack of leadership in the tech sector. Um, there's no driving force of adoption and currently any and information overload. So there are too many startups who are competing for too little attention. Um, I'm not sure if anyone's familiar with that, but um, if you are a broker, realtor, however you want to look at, however you want to label yourself in that category, if you look at how many um, different platforms are available to you, how do you make that decision? How do you choose which one is better? Um, so it's almost like you have so many choices in the industry that um, all of the all of the bandwidth is just being spread out so far. Hey, I'm back. I'm sorry. <gasps> Wonderful, Michael. You I really put me right on the spot. My computer just froze right in the middle of my comments. And I was panicked. I apologize. Uh, so somebody much. somebody texted. How ironic. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, everybody. I really <laughs> apologize. It's never happened before, but uh, I apologize. So, um, okay, so Kateri, let's just move it along quickly. So you're right here. Yep, uh, so this is the start of this slide. Okay, so when I think about like the last five years and what went wrong with the startups and, you know, sort of why we're in this new phase, um, a lot of the ones that got involved in the very beginning had said things like, well, let's challenge CoStar, you know, let's put them out of business. And then, and you could imagine how that worked. I mean, they're too established. I know that there's a lot of friction in the industry with CoStar, but that wasn't going to happen. Uh, so, so the companies that came out and said, we're going to challenge them, they failed. A lot, then of course, inevitably you always get the, you know, well, let's, um, let's put the brokers out of work. Uh, blah 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 and that you know one one company tried it and and and, and they raised 30 million bucks and they and they failed um then you had a lot of other companies that um you know a lot of professionals that joined the industry that didn't really understand how the industry worked or you know the nuances of it and a lot of those sites didn't last and and they failed and um they uh you know they've left the industry um the other thing was well data is so easy let's just put all these data points together and um you know uh, and have a site and that'll attract people and, and that didn't work either um and then the other thing was well let's let's get into this business because you know there, there's there's no competition it's huge and blah 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 so there was and that didn't do so well so th there was really no you know in the very beginning the first few years there was no compelling a lot of reasons for why uh sites would have been successful so okay next Um, so now like, okay, so where are we and what's going to drive the adoption? So a couple things. So millennials are clearly coming into this tech sector, into the real estate sector. They're, they're bringing technology with them and they're more comfortable using tech than a lot of the old folks like me. Um, so that's one sort of driver. Second thing is your clients, whether they're a tenant or whether they're a landlord, you know, they're using technology within their businesses. So they're sort of demanding that their professionals use technology. Um, the other thing is you're starting to see, as I mentioned earlier, that the brokerage firms are starting to invest in technology. And therefore, they're setting off this sort of arms race for uh, competition amongst themselves. So they're now really driving uh, investment. 
The other thing that we're starting to see is that there are a few companies that are looking to create sort of the Bloomberg model. And what I mean by that is that's one giant company where you'll wake up in the morning, you know, so you'll check your news feed, then you'll check your data, you'll check your deals, you'll check your commissions, you'll check, 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 check everything, and you'll stay on one site throughout the day to do all your business. And, and companies and sites are, are moving towards building that model. And that's where I think you're going to see a lot of consolidation um, within the industry. The other thing is, you know, people are working differently, and, and that's a societal change. They're working remotely, they're working. Uh, in flexible office space now, they're they're bringing with them their laptops and their phones. So just the whole nature of how people work is changing, and therefore they're going to be much much more looking to embrace uh, technology and the solutions. And then, um, as I said earlier, you know, big money is coming into the sector. Smaller, smaller, um, uh, fewer deals, but bigger checks. So those factors are going to start to drive adoption, and it's happening. I see it, I feel it, uh, everybody I talk to, things are moving very, very quickly. Next. Um, so where are we specifically right now? So right now, we're seeing the, the pack separate. You're having company, sites that are struggling to raise money, to get traction, they might have a good technology, and those are gonna get absorbed and eaten up by larger companies or they're going to go away. So we're clearly seeing that there are winners and losers in this space. The winners are companies like VTS, uh, Reonomy, uh, clearly 10X, um, Accelligent, uh, Apto. Uh, th there's a whole group of probably, you know, 25 to 50 startups that are doing really well. Bigger dollars are coming in, more money's coming in, bigger checks. Companies are failing, so that's real. I think there's going to be a big M&A wave that's coming, uh, that's starting to happen. I think you're going to see a lot of deals start to take place. Um, the push for startups is to have revenue, and if you have revenue, then you've got a real point of differentiation um, as your, uh, for your site. And then I think you're starting to see, which is really exciting, now the, the tech uh, solutions are starting to touch other parts of the industry. So, for instance, I met up with a, a startup that's looking to bring appraisals online, uh, property management online. Um, so you're starting to see around the edges um, a lot of new startups coming into the industry. There's also clearly a tribe growing. What I mean by tribe is it's a, it's a sort of an expression that was used by the marketing guru Seth Godin. He talks about a group of people, like-minded um, uh, common objective and goals that build an industry and that real estate tech tribe is growing. And as I said earlier, you know, we're clearly just in the second or third inning of this industry. Um, now I'm not going to go through all cause we're running out of time. The winners in particular and describe each site, but I can tell you that they're focused on a couple different categories. So analytics dashboards clearly have been successful. So a company like VTS that'll tell you, you know, what's available in your building, um, uh, you know, who's looking at the space, who's touring the space, uh, et cetera, et cetera. That, you know, their big investor was Blackstone. So Blackstone saying to all their brokers, hey, you've got to use this product if you're going to work with us. So the VTS is probably the one that's most out in front. Honest Buildings is another one that gives great analytics uh, data uh, and information to uh, building owners um, and a couple others. So those categories, I think, are the one, that category that's done the best so far. You're starting to see some transactional platforms like 10X, um, Office Space do well, more on the listing side. Again, not to displace the brokers at all, but to create greater efficiencies in how they might um, post a deal, an opportunity, uh, and, and attract some buyers. I think 10X is absolutely somebody that would keep a great eye on. There's a couple CRM sites that are doing really well. The data sites like Reonomy, uh, Reese has been allowed for a long time, doing very well. The capital market sites like Fundrise and Realty Mogul are successful. Clearly VR, uh, the multiple solutions, the Bloomberg model is a very interesting category to pay attention to. 
And then, uh, you know, there's marketing sites that'll help you get your promos out in a very efficient way or doing well. And then again, one of the, I think the most exciting categories for me is the WeWorks of the world, wearing their t-shirt today. Um, uh, real company, they're going public. There's also great ones like Liquid Space that are doing really well, Breather. And then I think the new category that's gonna be the, one of the most exciting to pay attention to is the building amenities. What I found always in my experience was, you know, landlords are great at, 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 at making deals happen, securing tenants, but maybe not so great afterwards once they're in a building. So the convenes and the waltzes of the world are focused on amenities uh, within the buildings. So, hey, there's a yoga class, hey, there's food, hey, there's an art show, bringing people together, also communicating about property management changes, upgrades, blah, 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 and things like that. So those are the sort of the categories in the industry that are doing really well. And again, you'll see nobody there talking about replacing the brokers. Uh, so I think these are all about how to make the brokerage community work better, how to make the landlord community uh, more transparent in terms of uh, their information. Next. So, like, if I think about, like, where it's going um, and what I would pay attention to and I think where the big upside is going to be, I, I clearly think that VR uh, is here to stay. It's a better way to show space. It's more time uh, efficient. Um, and I think that – I think VR in society I'm not so sure about, but I think in, in real estate I think it's going to be a very, very big – significant industry and i think that the way that you folks show space that i think the way that tenants like myself have been in the business will look at space i think will be forever impacted i think driverless cars is going to be huge game changer we're actually doing a whole event just on driverless in la in uh, september and i think that's going to that's going to change what our cities look like um for instance you think about the parking garages What's going to happen to them? The cars, where are they going to go? What does it mean to cities that will have less, hopefully, cars on the road? And um, so I think driverless is enormous. There was a site yesterday I read about also about driverless trucks. And I think that's also going to be um, absolutely happening and transformative. Um, I think AI is going to be an absolute game changer in terms of recommendations and uh, analysis and transactions. Um, but again, you know, you think about technology, you know, for professionals like yourselves, I mean, it's to understand these tools and then make them uh, invest in them so that you can be more competitive in how you differentiate yourself from your competitors. And AI is going to be transformative in the industry. I think that also your clients are going to be starting to look absolutely for more short term space solutions. Um, so I think that is going to be. Uh, really impactful, and that is technology. I think buildings will become much, much more amenity-rich environments. We've clearly seen the malls have been disrupted and changed, um, and I think they will become much, much more uh, dominated by food and other amenities. And I think lastly, I think you're absolutely going to see um, giant open-source platforms grow in commercial real estate. I think you're going to see uh, more towards the Zillows and the Trulias of the world, for better or worse, where uh, all information will be open, transparent, and will not behind, be behind a paywall, uh, for instance, with some of the sites that do that. Um, and I think you know who they are. So that's kind of like where I think it's heading in terms of technology and how it's going to impact the industry as a whole. Next. So... Listen, I hope, you know, again, I deeply apologize for the, uh, the, the irony of, of my presentation on tech uh, being completely disrupted by myself and my own tech. Um, I think if, if, you know, hopefully a couple things. If you're thinking about, you know, perhaps embracing some of these tech tools, I've given you a little bit of a better sense of where, you know, you might want to spend your time, whether it's VR or analytics and some of the sites you might want to go look at. I hope that, you know, perhaps if you're thinking about getting a job for a startup, you'll have a good sense of where we are in timing. So that'll give you some understanding of where the opportunities are. And I think hopefully, you know, you can use some of these, this information in discussing it with your colleagues, with your clients, and have a good sense of where it's going in the industry overall. Um, and I, I think lastly, you know, I'm a big, proponent of, as I said earlier, blogging and thought leadership. 
And, um, you know, if I were a commercial real estate professional, I would start to blog about technology. I'd start to talk to my clients about it um, because I think it only reflects that, you know, you're leading edge, that you're thinking about the future. And you're also thinking about their pain points in their particular business and how technology could be a great value add in getting um, your business um, more uh, efficient, more effective. And I think at the end of the day, technology is not going to uh, so much as eliminate um, jobs in the brokerage field, but I think it'll clearly differentiate those that are embracing it and will become more successful and those that are not. And so that sort of concludes my prepared remarks, but they're not prepared. And now I'm open to questions. Hi. Okay. Well, this is Amy, and um, I have a couple of questions that I wanted to ask you. I do have a comment here that says, uh, Michael, this is valuable info, info for me. Thanks for your time and advice. Um, I wanted to ask, you know, listening earlier, um, you're talking about all these large firms that have, you know, their technology divisions now investing all of this money. How are the smaller, what's the strategy for a smaller firm to compete with these large companies that are, you know, have millions and millions and millions of dollars in, to invest in developing their own tech tools? That's such a great question. I probably should have uh, devoted more of the presentation to it because that's, that's a fantastic question. So the real answer you is. You can is make that, more time at a different point as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. If I'm asked back, that'd be great. I think that um, it, it's the great level of the playing field to use technology now. And it's why I love content marketing so much because for instance, you don't have to have a big budget now to get to have the greatest Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn activity. You just have to have good ideas and content and use a couple basic technology tools. I think that technology can give a, a niche firm all the competitive advantage that a larger firm has. Um, you can, all these products, a lot of these products are, are very, very cost effective. They're not expensive to use. And they're also looking for professionals to embrace their product. You know, there's probably 10 VR sites I know for a fact that would love to get a call from one of your members to say, hey, we'd love to try it and use it. And, um, uh, you know, and, and they probably, a lot of them won't even charge you for it. So I think that all of these tools can make you more competitive with the larger firms. The larger firms are going to compete, you know, with each other. They're going to invest for, uh, you know, great media exposure and saying that they've got this and they've invested in this. And as I said, that's going to kind of be like an arms race. The, the more niche firms are the ones that I think can really build a great tech enabled uh, brokerage firm. So I think this is, really all about um, sort of your membership and others across the country understanding the opportunity here to use these tools to gain a competitive advantage. Okay. Um, I'm going to uh, move to some questions that people have typed in here. Uh, I did get a question earlier. Um, would you please restate the sources that you talked about at the beginning of your presentation uh, with the um, I think you were talking about text funnel, et cetera. And I'm going to type their web addresses into the chat box. Oh, look, there they are. <laughs> <laughs> so folks can Google those and uh, find out all about that stuff and, and set up their uh, feeds, right? Yeah, so a couple of them. And thank you. So uh, CREtech.com is about events um, and a directory, a free site. Uh, the events are free, but hopefully, again, we'll be in Texas in 18. Um, we'd love to hear from folks that want to get involved with us. Um, so that's the free event information and some news there on technology. The news funnel is, is, a, is a, a site that uh, gets you all of the news that you're interested in for free on your desktop or your mobile based on what you're interested in. Companies you want to follow, the topics that you're interested in, et cetera, et cetera. So that's the newsfunnel.com. The content funnel does blogging and social media for companies. Um, uh, and uh, again, that's uh, the contentfunnel.com. And then realestatetechnews.com is a site where we write a story a day about some new startup. So all those are, are great resources for you to check out. Thanks. Okay. 
Um, somebody has a comment, tech tools and processes are messy. Many startups fail or get merged, closed or morphed, so it can be challenging to pick the right horses. Uh, I've also find adoption rates with tools is fairly low or very slow in the CRE brokerage world. Someone commented. Uh, someone asked, do you have any examples of open source in CRE? So the, the trend which we wrote about, and I think I wrote about a little bit, is, that's happening right now is the API trend, which is the, just a, a technical expression for sites allowing people to come grab their content, their information, their data, and share it with other sites. So right now we are in the phase of open sourcing. It's coming. So if you could go to, for instance, a site like Excelligent right now, and you could see all sorts of availability uh, or commercial search. Um, you could go to a site like um, 10X and see all this, the information and availabilities on their platform. So there is no um, MLS yet. All of that is behind a paywall like CoStar, but this is now going to be the big challenge in the industry towards open sourcing um, over the next year. And it'll there'll be a fight. There'll be a big fight. There are some lawsuits going on now that you could follow yeah. between, for instance, CoStar and Excelligent. Uh, and that's what this fight is going to be about, about open source uh, availability. And it'll be very interesting to pay attention to. So there is a lot of open source now, not that much. It's not like residential where you could just, you know, you go to Google and you could type in some information and find out what your neighbor's house is worth. Um, but it's coming. And there's a few of them. And I could, you know, perhaps as a follow up, send, send some of that information. Um, someone's asking how they get in touch with you. Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah. I, I, as Amy was asking earlier, you know, do you want people to call you? And I'm like, hell yeah. Uh, so you can email me at Michael at CRE tech.com. I I talk to everybody. Um, as you can tell, I like to talk. So you could reach out and ask me for suggestions of, you know, either particular sites, you might have an idea for a startup and I can give you some feedback on that. You might want to connect with somebody in the space and I can connect you there. So email is great. Um, I'm on Twitter and I blog uh, a lot. Uh, I do a lot of blogging. So I put a lot of content out there, try and do a lot of Q and A's with people, try to write my, my own thoughts of what's going on. So please, please, please uh, reach out to me. Love to chat to, with anybody. I have, I have a couple more. Um, let me know if you need to scram. I know we've gone a little- No, I'm good. I'm good, I owe you. Um, someone says in your, ooh, this is ooh. In your opinion, what's the best market data site to get sale and lease comps for commercial properties? Oh, it always comes down to comps, doesn't it? <laughs> it always comes down to comps. Uh, you know, there's a free site like Comstack. I don't know their um, their market coverage yet. I, 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 you could look up Coast, uh, um, uh, which we'll call it. You could look up uh, Comstack. They've now, again, API sharing with Excelligent. Um, in terms of comps, I think that's, again, one of those areas that's behind walls. So Reese or RCA, CoStar, I mean, they have built very, very large subscription businesses where they're keeping that stuff behind. You know, if you look at CoStar, and again, this is not a knock on them, it's just more of a commentary about where the industry's been. You know, what they built is a monster business by taking your data, collecting it and selling it back to you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, right. So A lot of folks are very aware of that. Right. No. So I like, so how, how are we, how is somebody going to challenge that concept, that delivery? They're going to defend that turf as they have through lawsuits. And there's a big one going on now with Excelligent. So to me, that is going to be the great struggle and challenge. Do we break away from a few sites that control all of your data, my pointing, and make that open source? That'll be the, I think, the big frontier. All right. 
someone says, other than Bowery, do you know of other startups no. that could potentially disrupt the appraisal industry? Yeah, so thanks. I don't know who said that, but maybe they're reading my blog or they're just incredibly educated about what's going on. So I met the, the folks at Bowery. I know them very well. I spent time with them. Um, there are a few people, other sites, and again, I, I could follow up with an email if somebody wants to email me that are that are looking at the appraisal. Um, there again, this is where I say, like, you know, paying attention. And to your point, Amy, like, how how does a does a, a more of a niche firm compete? Well, by by sort of aggregating some of those tools, appraisals, and offering your clients that ability to make that process more seamless for them, you've just gained a competitive advantage. I did not realize that CBRE, for instance, was one of the largest users of appraisals in the country. Hundreds of millions of dollars that they spend, but they have their own business doing appraisals as well. So that's one area. So I think you see that. I mean, the other thing is starting to really see some businesses go after insurance. So that's another one that I think is going to come into the industry. And there's a whole bunch of those that are looking at, uh, renter's insurance, uh, et cetera, et cetera, on the residential side. So, it, you know, again, you start to start to understand where it's going. It's going around the edges now. And that's where the money's going. So Bowery raised um, a million five, a million seven without, a, without revenue and without a real product launched yet from very sophisticated investors. So that tells you they're starting to understand there's going to be traction here. But I could come uh, up with some other ones. Uh, I'm, I'm going to ask the next, I think I have two or three here, and then we're going to have to cut things off. Um, uh, lots of thank yous, by the way. I'm oh, yeah. Again, I apologize for the screw up on the time. Uh, is saying your opinion of drones. What's your opinion of drones? Boy, that sounds like an entire presentation. You know, that's a great one. Uh, I didn't put in drones in my uh, presentation. I, and maybe this is just my bias, my naivete. I don't see it just yet in terms of a monster category. I think there's a lot of regulatory issues that have to be yeah. gone through. Um, but I think that they'll find their way into the appraisals. I think they'll find their way into videos. Uh, production. I think that they will find their way into the industry, but I would. I, I'm skeptical that anything that has to do with the government, and I think drones have some ways to go. And then you've got, you know, very entrenched people that maybe don't want to see that go. I think those are the types of things that I sort of stick, you know, steer a little clear of. I mean, I actually think driverless. While it sounds like that, it's going to be a regulatory nightmare. I think that there is so much momentum towards driverless. Um, that I think you're going to start to see that come. But I think drones are real. I think it's happening. I just don't know that it's going to be, and I could be completely wrong because I'm not an expert in any of this. I'm just a guy who, you know, reads a lot and talks to a lot of people, um, and screws up a lot of presentations. I don't see it as a ginormous category, but I think it'll be impactful. All right. Uh, two more here. Uh, first one, seems like there are two main areas for CRE tech tools. One, transactional processes like databases, CRM, fundraising, marketing, et cetera. And yep. two, CRE property ownership, management, driverless cars, ride sharing, building automation and amenities, et cetera. Any thoughts or other areas? Um, yeah, so I think property management is a site that's raising a ton of money in the yeah. property management space to uh, make that more efficient. I think, as we said, appraisals, I think insurance, um, I think mortgages, I think uh, financing, as, as the person said. I think, again, around the edges. You know, the thing about commercial is, as you, as you all know better than me, it's such a ginormous decision that impacts, a bad decision impacts a business in profound ways, right? So the, the person, the professional, the human aspect of it will never go away. That'll not be able to be disrupted by AI. Whereas in, in, finance, in finance, yes, it will. I think, and I was with some friends, some folks the other day, we had a whole sort of roundtable discussion just talking about what's happening on Wall Street. I mean, there are going to profoundly 
be uh, job losses on Wall Street, in brokerage, in stocks, because machines can make great decisions based on numbers and algorithms, but they can't make great decisions based on culture, on where companies are going to work, on location. And so I think it's not going to challenge the, the professional, but it will separate the pack between those professionals that embrace technology and those that don't. Those that do will be the leaders. Those that don't, unfortunately, I think will be the laggards. So that's how I kind of see it playing out over the next couple of years in terms of tech. I think it'll be around the edges, and I think it'll give some professionals a real competitive advantage against uh, others in the industry. All right. I have one more question that you're going to love, and then I'm going to wrap up and give everybody some uh, information on our upcoming webinars. Here's our last one. Michael, can you better describe the CRE Tech event in LA? Will it be mostly California firms? Is that one of my team members asked that question? Thank you. I think, thank <laughs> you for that one. That was like a gift. Um, so what my goal is for the CRE Tech events is to make them such that industry professionals want to come and learn about the industry of technology. It's not for the startups to promote themselves in the sense that they're going to talk to each other. So we're trying to get brokers there and we're trying to get landlords there. So the San Francisco event, we had our panelists were tenants and they were developers and they were brokers. And in the audience uh, with the booths were all of the startups. I don't remember how many we had. Kateri could tell us, I mean, dozens and dozens. So you can go there and find out what's going on. People came from around the country, from around the world to come to that event. The LA event is very sort of theme oriented around driverless and AI, but there will be tremendous amounts of startups there for you to come and learn and network. And there'll be landlords and developers there as, uh, and brokers from around the country. And then the New York event in December will probably be our largest. And that'll have just some, some of the biggest names in commercial real estate talking about how they're using technology and what they see the future. And then again, in 2018, we hope to do a lot more events and absolutely Texas is on our radar screen to get a great event because we love Texas. So um, I hope you'll come to LA and um, again, we'll be drawing from around the country and not the world for that event. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Michael. And yes, if you, if you want him to come to Texas, I say shoot him an email. And, and yeah, please. Let's get you guys hooked up. Uh, all right, I'm gonna wrap things up here. Okay, thank you, Amy. Thank you, Texas. And Thanks again, my so deep much. apologies for our my screw up with the technology. It is uh, okay. So, um, but I appreciate the time. You bet. Uh, I'm going to let, remind everybody that on Thursday, actually, uh, Michael mentioned Reese with their information, and uh, hopefully, most of you know that. We do have your member benefit, which are the market reports for all of the markets and submarkets in Texas. We're going to have a webinar this Thursday at 10 uh, with uh, Ayanna Davis, who works for Reese, and she's going to talk more about how best to use those market reports and the information that's in them and where it comes from. If you go to the commercial webinars page on um, the TAR website, you can register for that. And then our next webinar for the commercial series will be on August 15th at 10 a.m. And the topic is going to be tax incentive financing zones and enterprise zones. And we're going to have Shane Som, who's from the Office of Economic Development over uh, across the street from me, actually here giving a little talk on that. So we hope that you will tune in for that one. Uh, keep your eye on your inbox and TAR social media, and I'll be sending out that registration link. Um, I'm sorry if we didn't get to everybody's questions, but uh, thanks so much for tuning in. Have a great day, and I will see you all soon. Take care. Bye-bye.